imagine if you could capture the sun's energy from anywhere, from windows, building facades, electric vehicles, or cell phone cases. However, the technology we use today is not suitable. We need a new material and technology to fulfill the requirements for those applications. Let me explain. Solar cells consist of multiple layers around a semiconductor. The most popular semiconductor used today is silicon. In order to create the next generation of solar cells, dozens of tier one companies are trying to replace silicon with a perovskite using an ink printing process. However, no one has been able to commercialize perovskite based solar cells as of today. At Serrera, we enable the photovoltaic industry to mass produce perovskite solar cells with a reliable perovskite ink, which has a much higher energy conversion efficiency and a more affordable, simpler, and shorter value chain compared to silicon. Also, perovskite has potential for double the energy conversion efficiency of silicon. A unique use case of our technology is to allow IoT devices, like phones and smartwatches, to capture energy from indoor light. Imagine that in the near future, any device that uses a battery will be able to recharge on indoor or outdoor lights. This is a $768 billion market. It's a huge market opportunity, and our goal is to own the market by 2027. Our solar ink has a long shelf life, provides high efficiency, and is compatible with different scalable manufacturing processes used by the industry. There are only two other companies marketing perovskite ink. However, their ink is only suitable for research and small size coating processes. Our competitors are facing a significant challenge. The current perovskite ink has only a couple of days shelf life. This means that it's not suitable for mass production and is not commercially viable. At this time, our ink is the only one to pass the three-month stability mark. Our perovskite ink is the first step of a larger project to develop in the future our own flexible light solar panels that can be installed on any surface, such as electric vehicles or phone cases. We have multiple revenue streams that include the sales of our solar ink, consulting with customers, licensing and royalties from our manufacturing process, and also in the future, we may plan on selling our own perovskite film too. We have a comprehensive sales process where our sales executives are working on 150 leads on a weighted sales pipeline of over $4 million. As of today, we have sent our ink to 19 customers around the globe. Today, we have signed a letter of intent with our partner, Bright Solar, a statement to off work with Koyaku in the US and Zara in the UK, and an ink distribution agreement with ITEC in South Korea. This is an actual prototype of a perovskite solar cell made by our partner, Bright Solar. They are a large, well established European company. We are currently working with them to provide them with perovskite ink that will help them scale to mass production by the end of this year. We have a comprehensive IP strategy that includes protecting 44 innovations. Our patent filings include in licensing, granted, and pending patents. Our patent applications cover our core technology, future product iterations, and the adjacent market space. The customers are excited about our product. Solar has won multiple competitions, including the Canada's Clean 50 Top Projects, Top Startup Canada, Douglas 10 to Watch. We have been featured as emerging markets by the investment community in BC and Foresight named Solaire one of Canada's most investable tech companies. Let me tell you about our team. One Dr. Minute, Sahar one. Sam invented a fabrication process for 10 firm solar cells. Our co-founder and CEO, Fabian De, uh, De La Fuente, is a five-time serial entrepreneur with over 100 patents under his belt. And our chief development officer has tw over 25 years of experience in scaling coding technologies, having worked with Zara, Creo, and Toy America. Just for our ink, we forecast $34 million cumulative revenue by January of 2027, and our EBITDA to be positive by 2024. Next year, we are projecting $300,000 as a result of our solar ink sales, and in 2025, we will activate new revenue streams from licensing our manufacturing process. We recently closed our pre-seed round. Today, we have raised over $7 million in equity and non-elusive funding. After this round, we're planning a seed round to start in Q2 of 2023 to scale up our manufacturing process. We are planning to exit by acquisition in five to six years. Potential acquirers in the market include current players in the market, as well as companies Time in the is up. industry. Thank you.
Pratiba, I'm so sorry about kicking you out. I was trying to add uh I was trying to no worries. change the <laughs> change the presenting mode. Thank you so much for presenting, Sala, and sharing what you guys are doing with uh Solaris. I will probably handle most of these questions. And if you have anything you want to add there on top as well, then go for it, Pratiba. But my, my first question for you would be how large do you see the actual Perscovite and Solar Inc. market being and why? Uh, so right now we're seeing it at uh, like the overall market uh, is going to be around 700 billion by 2027. But for perovskites, uh, I think, and what we're trying to do, I think the overall is going to be uh, about 8 billion by 2027. And the reason is this includes any flexible solar panels. Uh, currently, there exists a lot of uh, other alternatives to silicon, but they're not as efficient and they're not as scalable. And what we're doing here is we're providing a technology that could be more efficient, cheaper, and allows for these like innovative applications that silicon doesn't. Uh, so it'll easily uh, take over that market. What we're aiming for is uh, to have a sum of uh, 325 million. Okay, understood. And you're planning on building and manufacturing the panels yourself then as kind of the next stage? Yeah, so step one right now is we make the ink and we sell it to manufacturers who are already doing flexible panels maybe and rigid panels uh, because you can make rigid panels with the ink. Uh, it's just replacing the silicon with the ink. And then uh, the next stage is developing our own manufacturing process and then licensing that to those manufacturers or new uh, players that want to go into the solar industry. And then after that, we might develop our own solar film that can be flexible and has some uh, translucency uh, features to it. Uh, so that's uh, the plan. So you think you can develop better solar panels than the folks who've been doing it for a while? Uh, yes, we, we think we can because this is a new technology and uh, we're uh, uh, the ones who are like pioneering uh, this. And you're market. targeting a five to six year exit? Uh, yes, that's the plan. Why is that the plan? Uh, so we're hoping uh, to target that uh, because we'll have uh, enough revenue to be valued at a billion dollars, hopefully, by then. And uh, we'll create a lot of uh, returns for investors. And hopefully we're expecting to get bought out by one of those large players that have been doing solar for a while. Uh, and hopefully they can uh, continue scaling the technology further. How big can you build this in five to six years? That's one one challenge I see is whenever founders say, we, we, we want to build this and exit, it's kind of like saying, I want to marry this girl and then have some new options in six or seven years. It's not going to turn into anything super serious. Oh, we're taking it very seriously. It's just uh, we're being a bit more, uh, I think, uh, realistic with the big players out there. They've been around, they do a lot of different technologies involved in uh, a lot of different uh, areas of the uh, value chain for solar. Uh, so we think uh, it is better to work with them on developing this technology. And of course, if in the future we see a capability to uh, do our own thing and uh, grow this to something even bigger, we will go with that. Uh, but uh, so far, most of our advancements have been uh, were, uh, the result of us working with the uh, partners on testing the technology. And that's where we're foreseeing going. Uh, we'll continue testing it with different uh, players. And uh, eventually we will be testing it with one of those potential acquirers. Uh, and they will uh, uh, obviously want to uh, uh, express interest and in maybe acquiring us. Uh, so we're just being uh, a bit more realistic there. Pratiba, do you have any questions from what you were able to see? Sorry about that again. No, no worries. And I was literally at the tail end of this presentation. So apologies if uh, you've 
covered this today. Just curious, what are you looking to, what are your key milestones that you're looking to achieve over the next 12 to 18 months, leave alone the next five, six years of the success that you're anticipating? 12 to 18 months, what are the key milestones you're looking to uh, see as success? Uh, so I would say uh, our key milestones uh, for that time period would be to uh, have helped our partner uh, Bright Solar uh, create those uh, scalable legit panels, partner with uh, another company, which we're having discussions now and evaluating uh, some options uh, that makes uh, flexible panels as well, and uh, take that to scale with them too, so they're able to create uh, industry standard uh, size scalable uh, flexible panels uh, using our ink and also to develop our own manufacturing process by the end of those 18 months. I hope that answers your question, uh, Artiva. No, that's helpful. Thank you, Saleh. And for, the, for that timeline that you have, your goal for 2027, how much capital do you need to reach that and to reach scale? How much more are you going to have to raise? Uh, so we're expecting uh, having to raise anywhere between uh, from now to 2027, uh, anywhere between uh, 30 to uh, uh, 40 million, I think. Uh, as, as you know, it's very uh, uh, extensive uh, like research that we have to do, and uh, we're hoping to uh, have a positive that by 2020 by end of 2023 uh, or early 2024. Uh, so hopefully we'll start matching that and uh, scaling. But just to take it to the next level, uh, I think those would be the numbers. Uh, so a seed round of 5 million, then Series A maybe 10 million, and uh, maybe a 20 million Series B. And if you fail, why will it be? Uh, if we fail, I think uh, the main reason would be not being able to get the funding needed uh, just because we're a bit more deep tech and it does take uh, more uh, cash to uh, help us uh, uh, develop the technology and prove it out. Uh, but I, I will say, as I mentioned, none of our competitors have been able to stabilize this ink in the past 10 years for more than a week and we've already achieved over three months stability. And, and this is for the ink to be applied in, on the panels. And uh, once it's in, in the panels and encapsulated, it lasts for a much longer time period. Uh, so we've been on the trajectory for success so far um, in this industry. So we were very hopeful.